You should, you should disobey government when government does two things. Number one, if government prohibits you from obeying God, you disobey. And if government mandates that you disobey God by doing something, then you disobey. So if government says, you will do this and it violates obey, obedience to God, then that's called civil disobedience and you're called to do it. And if they prohibit you from doing something that, honor, that honors God, that God's called you to do, then you disobey government. So for example, many countries, it's illegal to gather and worship, but the underground church does. Why? Because God says to do it. And what they said in the book of Acts is, should we obey God or should we obey man? And the answer is, you always obey man. Or you always obey God. No, 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 don't, don't obey man. There are that's some people a, that think that. That's a new that. one. Um, <laughs> now, the more nuanced, and, and by the way, the whole civil rights movement that Martin Luther King Jr. led, which was, I believe, a prophetic movement that led our union to a place of greater health uh, as a nation, undid segregation, undid uh, Jim Crow laws and gave civil rights to, uh, to blacks and to minorities in a way that uh, our nation sinned against those people. That was a prophetic movement that was rooted in civil disobedience. Uh, and it's a primary example of that. And uh, now, Romans 13 says, honor those governing authorities. And people are constantly saying, we're supposed to honor the government. Understand this that Paul was writing the New Testament, most of the books in the New Testament, at a time when there was no such thing as a constitutional republic or the right to vote. Nobody in the Roman Empire voted. In other words, you had no say in your government. You were born into a kingdom or an empire in which you didn't have representation, you didn't have a voice, and if you resisted, you were gonna be executed. And so what Paul was trying to do was to subvert the Roman Empire from underneath by creating people that loved God and were subversive in their obedience to Jesus and not in a military or in a political arena because that's all he had to work with. Um, and so what he's saying to obey, what he's really saying is, look, just learn, operate, be quiet, live peaceable lives. You're not gonna overthrow the Roman Empire. Uh, and so... Try to do the best you can and recognize that government is actually a gift from God and it's there. And if you read the rest of Romans 13, it says that the only reason that you need to be fearful of them is if you do evil because it says that they are ministers of God to deal with evil people. Okay, and so that's, that's what human government from God's economy is all about. It's to deal with evil in order to preserve good. And to the Christian, we're supposed to honor our leaders, and Peter, he says, honor the emperor. But remember, Paul could never have foreseen a time in which Christians in an empire, in a nation, could have voted and been a part of a self-representation type of a government. If Paul was writing the New Testament in America where Christians have a right to vote, I believe he would have said things differently to us because what we do know from Paul's example is any time it was to his advantage to advance the gospel, he leveraged his Roman citizenship. Like when they were arresting him, he's like, is it all right for you to flog a Roman citizen? And they're just like, whoa, 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 whoa. It was towards his advantage. When he wanted to preach before Caesar, he appealed to Caesar. He says, it's my right as a Roman citizen. And he appealed to Caesar. And we know that Paul preached to Caesar Nero the gospel of Jesus Christ and to his whole administration. It was towards his advantage. He leveraged the road systems for the sake of the gospel, education, all whatever he could, he leveraged for the sake of the gospel. And I think that that's how the church responds. We want to honor our government. We want to pray for our government. We want to be involved in our government. But if our government begins to require us to disobey God or it prohibits us from obeying God, that's when we refuse and we resist and we take whatever comes our way. 